In the world of industrial transportation, few machines inspire as much awe as the self-propelled modular transporter, or SPMT. These aren't just trucks, they are mechanical giants capable of moving entire ship hulls, massive bridge segments, and even nuclear reactors. For decades, this ultra-specialized technology was the domain of a few countries, particularly Germany, the Netherlands, and the United States. China, despite its rapid economic rise, found itself dependent on foreign suppliers for one of the most critical elements of its own infrastructure development. In the early 2000s, China was undergoing a period of unprecedented transformation, building highways, skyscrapers, power plants, ports, and entire cities at a scale the world had never seen. But as impressive as that was, there was a less visible reality behind it, when it came to transporting massive industrial components, China lacked the tools. The SPMTs required to move such loads were controlled by a handful of foreign companies, and gaining access to them wasn't easy. When the Chinese government attempted to purchase these machines from Germany, they were refused. The official justification was that Germany feared the technology might be reverse-engineered. Instead, they offered to lease, at high cost, with long wait times, and with strict usage conditions. This restriction was more than a nuisance, it was a strategic vulnerability. Delays in acquiring transport equipment began to affect major construction timelines. China was building the modern world, but had to wait months, sometimes years, for foreign machines just to move a critical piece of a dam or power station. It was a bottleneck China could no longer tolerate. In 2007, a decision was made, if foreign countries wouldn't sell, China would build its own. The responsibility fell to Wanshan Special Vehicle Company, a subsidiary of the state-owned China South Industries Group. At the time, Wanshan had never built an SPMT before. In fact, no Chinese company had. There was no mature supply chain, no reliable domestic hydraulics, no proprietary drive systems, and no proven software for steering dozens, sometimes hundreds, of wheels simultaneously. What they did have was determination, funding, and a very clear mission, and foreign dependence. Just two years later, the first generation of Chinese-made SPMTs rolled out of the factory. Though relatively modest in capability compared to Western counterparts, it marked the beginning of a new chapter. Engineers began refining the hydraulics. Control systems were overhauled. New modules were tested on increasingly complex terrains. By 2010, the transporter was recognized as a national key new product. In other words, it had become an official symbol of China's push for technological self-reliance. What followed was a period of relentless iteration. The Chinese SPMT was different from Western models in several ways. First, it adopted a fully modular design, allowing each unit to function independently but also operate as part of a larger convoy. Each module had multiple axles, each axle could steer 360 degrees, and every wheel could adjust its height and pressure in real time using hydraulic feedback systems. This gave the vehicle almost insect-like flexibility. It could crab walk sideways, pivot on the spot, or move diagonally, abilities that allowed it to navigate construction sites where space was limited. Perhaps most importantly, the control systems were entirely digital. While earlier European models relied heavily on manual input or semi-automated control, the Chinese version was developed from the ground up to operate via centralized software. Later versions would integrate with China's Beidou satellite navigation system, offering centimeter-level positioning accuracy, route automation, and real-time diagnostics. By 2017, 
China had unveiled a version of its SPMT that astonished the global engineering community. In a high-profile demonstration, a single convoy of modules, 128 meters long and comprising 520 wheels, transported a 5,200-ton ship hull across dry land. The video of this slow-moving mechanical colossus quickly went viral, not just within China, but around the world. More importantly, it proved one thing, China could now move the unmovable, on its own. What shocked foreign observers, especially those in Germany, was not just that China had closed the gap. It was how fast it had done so. The progress didn't stop. In 2020, Wanshan introduced its third-generation model, featuring 1,152 wheels and the ability to carry up to 550,000 tons in combined load when modules are grouped. That's equivalent to more than five Eiffel Towers in weight, and done with precision. Each wheel was now outfitted with sensors to monitor temperature, pressure, and wear in real time. Operators could monitor the entire system from a digital dashboard, a single control center that displayed stress levels, alignment, terrain compensation, and fault warnings. This wasn't just a transporter. It was a self-diagnosing, semi-autonomous logistics platform. With Beidou integration, the SPMT could navigate complex factory environments with minimal human intervention, even coordinating multiple modules in formation like a robotic convoy. But perhaps the most unexpected development came in the years that followed. Once China mastered the technology, it began leasing its transporters to other countries, exactly the model Germany had once used against it. Except now, China was in control. Today, over 50% of all new SPMT production comes from Chinese companies. The machines are leased across Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and even parts of Europe. Annual leasing revenue now exceeds 30 billion yuan. The machines that once symbolized China's dependence have become instruments of its global economic reach. More importantly, this shift altered the international power dynamic. When you control the equipment others need to complete major infrastructure, your leverage increases. In negotiations, in procurement, in policy. Infrastructure is power, and now, China holds a significant share of it. As of 2024, China is working on a fourth-generation SPMT platform. The design goals are ambitious, integrate AI-assisted navigation, cloud-based fleet management, and green propulsion systems, including electric or hybrid engines to reduce carbon emissions. There is also talk of using these transporters to carry components for space launch systems, linking them directly with China's inland spaceports. The applications keep growing, and the vision keeps expanding. Some critics once asked, why would China invest billions to build a piece of equipment that might only be used occasionally? Isn't that wasteful? The answer is simple. Because true independence requires control, control over supply chains, over timelines, and over technology. Sovereignty isn't just about borders. It's about capabilities. When a nation can design, build, and deploy its own critical tools, without foreign permission, that's when it becomes truly self-reliant. What began as a quiet engineering project born out of frustration has become a symbol of national confidence. China no longer waits for permission to build. It builds, and the world watches. Thanks for joining this in-depth exploration of China's phenomenal engineering, the rise of its SPMTs, a revolution too few knew was happening. If you found this breakdown enlightening, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned.